Have it together, uh, have well, the receiver well, working. I, well, I can say that. I've got Still have a few problems with the PA. We have it all put together now and got a little problem with oscillation but we'll take a look at that here and see if we can figure out what's doing that. And I've taken, I've got an extra cable or two here, I've got an audio pickup going to an amp here to give me a little more audio for taping. Main board I've connected the frequency tune pot with the connector so I can take the board out relatively easily and the same with the uh, volume control pot. Power comes through a Molex connector to where I can unplug and take the board out in just a few seconds. It doesn't take very long. That way it's easy to make modifications to the board and change things around. PA sitting back here for now. It's heat sunk to the back of the chassis. Got a relay here, TR relay. And other than that, everything's pretty simple. This is what the front end of it looks like. We have volume control pot here. Turn that up. We don't hear anything right now. We're not tuned to anything. We have a single tune pot with turns count and dial on. We're just running. We're just running off of a dipole, running up just very close to the roof here. It's easy to tune with this single knob. I have a little bit of stability problem to work on, but we'll fix that after we get the PA problems fixed. The band's not really very active right now. Okay, over here, just power on indicator and on off switch. So, real simple. We'll put a faceplate on it after we get everything all functioning properly. When I key it, I'm getting reading about three and a half watts. We actually have about four measured watts, and I'll show you how we do that. And this is actually pretty stable and works well from just about I've tested from 5 megahertz to 15 megahertz and with no problem so what I think we may need to do is look before the linear amplifier and we'll check it out to see if we can figure out where the problem originates okay the way you measure power is we have 40 volts peak to peak there. Formula says peak to peak voltage divided by 2 will give you peak times 0.707 will give you RMS then you square that because P is equal to E squared over R 
divided by their impedance. So here we have 40 volts divided by 2 gives us 20 volts times 0 0.707 gives us 14.14. If we square that and then divide it by 50 ohms we end up with 3.98 watts. So that's close enough to the uh, 4 watts to make me happy. So that's a good reference point when you get 40 volts peak to peak and we're working 50 ohms that'll give you, uh, you have 4 watts there. We're going to run a frequency sweep on the linear. What you see on the screen is we're running it from 10 to 20 megahertz and it goes to 20 megahertz, turns around so there's 15 megahertz right there in the middle 14, 13, 12, 11, 10 and it turns around what we're looking for is any spurs or spurious responses. Well, that really looks pretty clean. We don't see much. You can see it drops off a few, uh, few dB. Each uh, division on this spectrum analyzer is 10 dB. So it's going from just a little over the line there. And it's down oh, a couple dB there. And it's down probably about 6, 8 dB up at 20 megahertz. Let's do one other thing. That looks good there. Let's do something else though that uh, maybe will make it not look quite so good. I've changed it to 2 megahertz per division. So that's still our center frequency there. 15 meg. Oops, coming up there in the back is second harmonic. So when we get down to 10 megahertz, what we see is the second harmonic coming back up on the filter. That's not quite as good. There it comes. So let's stop it and take a look and analyze it just a little bit closer. There we have 10 megahertz in right here. Here's second harmonic up here. Right now it's only about 8 meg, eight meg down. Well, part, or 8 dB down. Part of the reason there is our filter is not designed to take out that. So let's go to 14 megahertz and take a look after we retune. Now we have the 14 megahertz in. And we find that here's our reference for our 14 meg here. We're 10, 20, 30, about 34, 35, 34 dB down. We could probably improve on that by adjusting on our filter a little bit. This probably would be acceptable. It would be better if it was 40 dB or so or 50 dB. I've connected the linear back up to the output of the exciter board and I've removed the input from the modulator mixer diodes here by popping up one end of the capacitor and what that allows me to do, instead of using the output of the mixer, I'm directly inputting the output, the 14.2 megahertz there from the signal generator, and running it to the last few sections of circuit. I pop this capacitor up right here. This end is up, and I'm inserting an input from the signal generator. That way I'm running 14.2 megahertz through this transistor, through the filter over here, out into this transistor here, and leaving the exciter board, it goes over to the PA there. Let's see if we can make this work in this mode. Okay, I have the signal generator hooked up. It's on the bottom, and what you're seeing there is it has about one volt amplitude and I'm getting about 52 volts out. So if you do the calculation that works out to be about 6.7 watts. Watt meter shows 6 watts or a little over 5 watts. So that seems to be working at that point. Let's try something. Let's vary the frequency. One thing you have to be a little aware of though while you're doing this is temperature of the device. 
it's just barely warm to the touch right now so we're not hurting it yet but it's designed for operating uh, intermittently and not CW like this so you have to watch out for that so you don't overheat it I'm at 14.2 meg I'm going to drop down in frequency 190, 180, 170 the bottom is starting to get screwed up a little bit 150 so that doesn't look real clean there there's something going on what I'm going to do is increase the amplitude. If I increase the amplitude of the drive a little bit, it seems to clean it up. So let's go up in frequency now. That was 14,150. 60, 70, 80, 90, 200, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 300, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. So what that looks like is if I had a drive level of about 1.2 volts that's what's showing down here in the bottom if I had that drive level at this point it seems to work fine what I'm going to do now is hook this capacitor up in the circuit I'll stand it up off the board to where I can actually hook a scope probe on it so we can see what kind of drive we're getting and just to save the linear is I've disconnected the input to it because there's no need we don't need to run it while we're troubleshooting the exciter board here's the advantage to having the connectors on the board just unplug a few connectors and then the only thing left on it is the coax going over to the to the relay switching so, and that's pretty easy, just remove a couple screws and it comes loose from the relay end.